Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about area and perimeter, but before we begin, today's lesson has been brought to you by these fig bars. Don't know where they came from, but they are delicious. Alright, so area and perimeter is something that we've been covering in third and fourth grade and maybe even before that. So it's not going to be anything that's brand new, but it is something that we are going to be covering again, but we are going to take it to the next level. So our goal is to be answer questions pertaining to area and perimeter and how to figure out what the area and perimeter is. So let's go on into our program. So let's look at the slide here about area and perimeter. <clears throat> so I want you to go ahead and start by finding the perimeter yourself for this rectangle here. Yeah, so go ahead and find the perimeter here thinking about what you know. So you have to pause it, solve it. Hopefully you're able to look over here and you see the perimeter. Oh, and that looks a little bit different. But I assure you it's the same thing. The perimeter is equals two times the length plus two times the width is the same thing as the length plus length plus width plus width. It's just two times. So not anything really different, just the same thing. So go ahead and you're able to figure that out. Two times the 14, because or 14 plus 14, and two times the eighth, or eight plus eight, going to solve that. 14 times 2 is 28, and 2 times 8 is 16. We add them up to get a perimeter of 44 feet. Hopefully you were able to do that. Maybe you had to dust off the cobwebs in your head about going back into the recesses of your mind and thinking about perimeter and area, but hopefully that wasn't too much. All right, if it was, that's okay. We're going to keep working on it. Now let's think about area. Area is also something that you've covered, and think about the same rectangle, what would the area of this rectangle be? Pause it and solve. All right, hopefully you were able to pause and solve. Now, if you look up here, we have the same thing, length times width, but we also have this little b and h. Well, that means the little base or the height. So this is sometimes if you have a three-dimensional figure and it wants you to know the area of the, of the face of a rectangular prism. So that's where you're going to use that, but it's still basically length times width, and so that's where we're going to mainly focus length times width, which so it's going to be 14 times 8 for this one, and 14 times 8 is 112 square feet. Now notice it has this little 2, and the perimeter did not, but this area does, because it's basically counting the number of squares that would be inside this rectangle. So it'd be 14 wide, 8 tall, or 8 wide, 14 long, however you want to look at it, and you're going to have that many squares. So 112 squares would fit inside this rectangle. Not too bad. So that's basically it, perimeter and area, but I said in fifth grade we are going to take this to the next level. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the fifth grade level. So in fifth grade we said... Uh, <clears throat> In fifth grade, you might see something like this, where you have the length of one side, the area, and it's asking for perimeter, and you kind of like, what do I do? How do I get there? So we, for perimeter, we're going to have to know the length and the width, but we don't have the width. So we're going to actually have to find the width. We're going to have to work backwards, find the width. So we're actually going to look at the formula for area, which again was length times width. So let's plug in what we do know. Well, we know that the area is 96 and the length is 12, but we have this W for the width, so we don't know the width. Now, the big thing here is thinking about inverse operations. We could think about it 12 times what equals 96, or think about the inverse operation of multiplication, which is division, right? So, if the inverse operation is division, we can say 96 divided by 12 equals the width. Yeah! So what is 96 divided by 12? Well, that's 8. So that means our figure has a width of 8 feet. So now that we found the width, we can find the perimeter. Now, don't get tricked up here. Some people think, oh, I found the answer, and then they put 8 as the answer, but it's not 8. You have to go all the way back and make sure you're answering the question, which this one is, asking for perimeter. So now that we know the width, we're not going to get tripped up and say that width is our answer, we're actually going to solve for the perimeter. So 2 times the length is 12, so the length is 12, and the width is 8, so 2 times 12 plus 2 times 8. Well, 2 times 12 is 24, and 2 times 8 is 16. We add those together, meaning that we have a perimeter of 40 feet. 
again, it doesn't have the little square because we're going on the outside, just the length of the outside. So that was it. I want you to pause the video after this one, and I want you to see if you can solve this one on your own, noting, knowing that the length of one side is 16, the area is 192, and you are looking for the perimeter. So hopefully you solve, you pause the video and you're able to try to solve it. Even if you weren't able to solve it, you at least tried because that's how we learn is that struggle. All right, so we're going to start with what we know again, and we know the area, so we're going to have to work backwards from there. Plug in the answers that we have. 192 is the area. 16 is the length. So 192 equals 16 times the width. So think about our inverse operation again. So inverse operation of multiplication is division. You got it. So 192 divided by 16 equals the width. So what is 192 divided by 16? 12. Yeah. So we know that the width of our rectangle is 12 now. So if you weren't able to get 12, go ahead and pause and see if you can find the perimeter. All right. If you were, let's go ahead and keep moving. So perimeter is 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. Let's go ahead and plug in our information now that we know our length and our width. 2 times 16 plus 2 times 12. Well, 2 times 16 is 32. 2 times 12 is 24. Add those together to get a perimeter of 56 feet. Excellent! Good job. So now we know our perimeter, and that's what we were looking for. So let's go on to the next step, which is what if we know our perimeter and the length of one side, but we need to find the area. Again, same thing. We're going to have to work backwards with what we know thinking about perimeter. So think about the formula of perimeter. And I think this one is a little bit more challenging, but you can still do it. So let's say our perimeter is 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. So plug in what we have. Our perimeter is 42 and the length is 13. Let's go ahead and solve 2 times 13, which is 26. So now we have this weird operation. 42 equals 26 plus 2 two times the width. But let's think about this two width as one operation. So let's think about this as two times width is one part. 26 is the other part, and then we have our total of 42. So part, part, whole. So what is the, op what is the inverse operation of addition? Subtraction, right. So we can still think about this as 42 minus 26 equals two times the width, which still works. So 42, time, 42 minus 26 equals, let's solve 42 minus 26 equals 16. 16 equals 2 times the width. So what is 2 times the width? Well, the 2 times the width, 2 times what equals 16? Well, 2 times 8 equals 16, which means our 8, once again, is the width. So put that on up there. Just shove that on this board. And are we finished? No. But we can use our formula for area now. Now that we have the width, we can find our formula for area. So length times width. So 13 times 8. What is 13 times 8? 104. So the area is 104 square feet. 100 little squares, 104 squares on the inside here. And we had to work backwards. So we started with our length of one side, we, we knew our perimeter, and we had to work backwards from our perimeter to find the width and then find the area. So let's see if you can go ahead and do it on this next one. So what is the area? So you have a length of 22 feet, and you have a perimeter of 64, and you're finding the area. So go ahead, pause, move backwards, and see if you can do this. So you use our formula for perimeter, which is 2 times length plus 2 times the width. Let's go ahead and plug in what we have. We know the perimeter is 64 and we know the length is 22, so 2 times 22. Let's go ahead and solve 2 times 22 to equal 44. And now we're left with 64 equals 44 plus 2 times the width. So what is the inverse operation of addition? Subtraction. And again, we're going to think about this as part, part, whole, part, part, whole, and we can use our fact families and end up with 64 minus 44 equals 2 times the width. So go ahead and solve 64 minus 44, which equals 20. 20 equals 2 times the width. So 2 times what equals 20? Well, 2 times t. 
10. So our width is going to be 10 because 2 times 10 equals 20. So let's go ahead and put that on our rectangle over there. Hopefully you're able to get that. So now we have our width and we have our length. And now we can use our formula for area. Whew, a lot of work to get to this, but we got it. So the length is 22, the width is 10, 22 times 10, which equals 220 square feet. Excellent. You're doing great. I know this is a lot, but you can do it. We're going to keep practicing. We have several activities for you to practice with. So in fifth grade, we're going to be talking about sometimes we might see two figures together, put them together, compound figures. And so they're both going to be quadrilaterals at this point. So we are going to be trying to find what these shapes are. So the perimeter and area. So sometimes we'll be finding just the perimeter, sometimes the area, sometimes, like in this case, both. So we are going to have to find the perimeter. And a lot of times we're going to have missing sides. So you're going to have to try to figure out what those missing sides are. So for instance, this side is missing this, this, and this sides. So we're going to have to figure them out. So knowing that the rectangles, that this is one rectangle and this is one rectangle, what does that make this side? So if this side is four foot, this side is also going to be four foot. And if this side is six foot, this side is also going to be six foot. But the other part is this. Well, we don't know what this side is because it's not cut off like these. So we're going to have to think about this line here. Knowing that these are all 90 degree turns, we're going to think about this bottom side. It's going to be the same as this five foot section here, this five foot section, section here, and this, this blank section here. So five plus five plus what equals 14? Well, five plus five is 10. 10 plus what equals 14? Four. So that means the missing section is four. And now we can find our perimeter. And remember, the perimeter is the outside length the entire way around. So you're going to add 6 plus 4 plus 4 plus 5 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 14 to give you a perimeter of 48 feet. So that distance all the way around is 48 feet. Now the area can be a little bit trickier because you have two, and it might be a little scary, but just think about these as two rectangles together. So we're just going to make them two rectangles. You can think about this as a small rectangle and a large rectangle. And sometimes you can have more options, but this one we're just going to make it two rectangles. A five foot rectangle and a five foot length and four foot length width on this rectangle. 14 foot long on this, six feet wide. And so our formula can be two of those together. So you can think about the area of this rectangle and the area of this rectangle and then add them together and a formula is going to look like this. So let's go ahead and plug it in. 5 times 4, which is a small rectangle. 14 times 6, which is a larger rectangle. Go ahead and solve. 5 times 4 is 20. 14 times 6 is 84. And we add those together, which gives us an area of 104 square feet. Not hard. It is a lot of steps, but it's, it's like a puzzle. You can do it. I like puzzles. Yay, puzzles! Now, go ahead and try this one on your own. You are missing a couple sides. So I want you to pause, see if you can find the perimeter and area. Again, even if you get it wrong, at least you are trying, and that's what we are looking for, is you trying. So go ahead and give it a shot. All right, hopefully you're able to try to figure out the perimeter. Now we are gonna have to deduce what these other sides are because the rectangles, that's not gonna help us knowing it's rectangle. So we know that this left side is seven foot, this is two foot, and this blank section together are gonna equal seven feet because they're 90 degree turns. They're going to be the same length. So 2 plus what equals 7? Well, 2 plus 5 equals 7. So that means that this length is 5 feet. So now we have to find the bottom one. Well, we know that the bottom one is going to be the same thing as this 6 foot section and 9 foot section together. 6 plus 9 is going to be 15, which means the bottom length is 15 feet. And all we have left to do to find the perimeter is add up all the outside edges. So 7 plus 9 plus 2 plus 6 plus 5 plus 15, which gives us a perimeter of 44 feet. Woohoo! So now that we have your perimeter, if you did not get that, go ahead and try the area. All right, now you may have drawn two rectangles, knowing that we have two smaller rectangles. We're going to make this in two rectangles. And you may have seen it like this 
with a nine foot and two foot section and a 15 foot and five foot section. Be careful with the numbers. Don't get distracted by all the other numbers. Just think about the length and the width of the one rectangle that you're doing and the length and the width of the other rectangle. Don't get distracted by the other numbers. Okay. So you may have done yours like this, or you may have divided it like this. Both of them are fine. Both of them are going to give you the same answer. So I went with this way. So we had six foot by five foot section and a nine foot by seven foot section. So same concept, both gives us both the same thing. So now we have to find the area. So six times five is 30, nine times seven is 63, add those together which gives us an area of 93 feet, 93 square feet. And if you would have done it the same way, it would have given the other, sorry, if you would have done it the other way, it would have given you the same answer of 93 feet. All right, well, that is it. That's all there is to it. Now, it can be a little confusing, and I know that was a ton of information. If you do have any questions, please contact your teacher, ask your teacher, phone a friend, call, message, meets, Whatever you can do to get a hold of your teacher to figure out more if you have questions. That's what we're here for. Uh, we're proud of you. Keep it up. Bye.